In this video we'll go through setting up some interfaces and static routes on a Juniper SRX firewall. So on my factory default SRX1 10 appliance, all of the interfaces except uh, fast Ethernet 0, 0, 0 will have Ethernet switching enabled. This basically means they're all in layer 2 uh, mode in the same broadcast domain. So first let's remove uh, some of the interfaces from the Ethernet switching family so we can convert them into layer 3 routed interfaces. That way we can apply IP addresses to them. So what we can do first is log in or uh, go into CLI mode and then if we type show interface uh, terse command we can see that the interfaces are all in the Ethernet switching family which is layer 2. Um, so if we go into one of the interfaces by first going to the configuration hierarchy and then typing uh, edit interfaces to go into the interfaces let's go into fast ethernet 002 and then let's delete everything under the interface and confirm that and let's just do the same for uh, another interface as well let's do it for interface 3 let's uh, delete everything under this interface let's uh, confirm that let's do a commit so after the commit we can do a show interface test again and once we run the show interface test then two interface should not have the family ethernet switching protocol uh, applied to them so if we do a run show interface test and we can see here um, fast ethernet 002, fast ethernet 003 and there's no ethernet switch enabled on them so they are unconfigured interfaces now um, we've deleted everything under the interfaces so what we can do now is type set interfaces let's go into fast ethernet 002 uh, which is the physical interface if we type in unit 0 after it uh, basically unit 0 is a logical unit also sometimes referred to as a channel or sub interface by some vendors so each physical interface must have at least one um, configured logical interface you can also type fast ethernet 002.0 to represent unit 0 as well which is a quick way of doing it and then we can do family inet so this identifies the protocol used by the logical interface. You must um, almost always want to configure at least one family on each logical interface. So typically family INET is used when configuring layer 3 IP version 4 interfaces and then the last thing we need to do is specify the address. So type address and then specify the address. Let's go for 172.16.20.20 with a 24 mask and if we hit enter and uh, that interface has been now uh, configured so let's say for example uh, if you specify the wrong interface you can use the rename command as well but if we do a commit on this we can again do the run show uh, interface terse command to ensure that interface has been configured with that IP address so if we do run show interface terse and we can see here the uh, 2.0 interface has been configured with this uh, IP address so uh, that has worked absolutely fine for us and now what we can do if we just make sure we're at the top of the hierarchy uh, we can do a rename command so rename interface is going to the interface 002.0 um, family um, inet and then address specify the address which is 172.16.20.20 with a slash of 24 if we type to address we can give it a new address name.
our new address so 10.20.1 slash 28 um, hit enter on that and do a commit and then after the commit we can again do a show interface test to see if the uh, IP address has changed to 10.10.20.1 So if we do a show interface test, and now you can see it's changed the IP address to 101020one slash 28. Okay, so you can also uh, remove the IP address altogether from the interface using the delete command. So we do a, a delete um, interfaces and specify the interface 00. zero 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 two, and do a, a family. Sorry, it's dot zero for unit zero. Specify the specify family inet, and hit enter on that. Commit, and once committed, we'll just confirm that it's been deleted. Okay, so let's do a show interface terse again, and we can see the FE002, the IP address has been deleted, but the logical unit is still there. We haven't uh, deleted everything under the interface, so uh, that's uh, worked for us. Uh, and to put an interface back into layer 2 or Ethernet switching family, we can do this by uh, typing set interfaces fe slash zero zero two zero zero um two uh, do a unit zero and then specify the family so this time it's going to be ethernet switching if we cross that off we can do a question mark and you can see the uh, different uh, family protocols uh, you can apply to the interface so Ethernet switching, if we hit enter on that and do a commit and um, you probably guess what I'm going to do next is a, a show interface test and we can see doing a show interface test uh, the logical unit and the uh, family um, protocol applied to it which is Ethernet switching so it's in layer 2 mode again ok and that's uh, pretty much it for layer 2 and layer 3 interfaces uh, let's uh, now have a quick look at loopback interfaces so loopback interfaces spot many different network and operational functions and it's an always up interface so it never goes down uh, it basically shows that the device is reachable even if some of the interfaces are down and to configure a loopback interface we will type set interfaces LO0 for loopback 0 uh, unit 0 uh, family uh, inet for uh, a lay 3 loopback interface and then specify the IP address 192.1.1.1 .1 .1 uh, dot 200 and a mask of 32 Oops, I've done something wrong there, so uh, let me just get rid of this address 192.1.1.200 dot dot slash 32 192.168.1.1 slash 32 Okay, it's um, I've got to put address before the actual uh, the actual address, so uh, I missed that keyword out. One nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one slash thirty two. Okay, and that's uh, worked fine. So we can again do a commit.
and then if you guess the command I'm going to run again which is uh, show interface terms which um, will confirm that the loopback address has been uh, created so if we look down here somewhere along the lines we should see a loopback address so uh, here it is the physical interface, the logical interface and we can see the 192.168.1.1 uh, configured for it. Also what you can do is to make loopback source address for packets so traffic is sourced from that uh, particular address we can uh, type set uh, system and I think it's uh, default uh, yeah default address selection so we can do a default address selection on that and commit changes uh, so the next thing we will look at is a couple of static routes so uh, static routes is done through the um, routing options hierarchy so we type set routing options uh, static root give it a root uh, 0, .0, .0, 0, 0, 0 slash 0 next hop uh, let's give it a next hop of 172.16.1.1 dot dot, uh, dot one and press enter so we've created a default static root and you can also use the same command but with this specified uh, particular subnet or host address for a non default static route for example um, let's uh, change the the, the uh, default address to 192.168.50.0 slash 24 let's do an enter on that let's do a commit to commit the changes Okay, so if we do a just a show, it's showing the uh, entire configuration for the appliance. If we go down it, we should see some static routes somewhere. So we can see under routing options, there's two static routes. One's a default route, this one. So to anything, the next hop is 172.16.11, and if you want to get to 192.168.50.0 slash 24, the next hop is. 172.16.1.1 as well and if I just flow through this hierarchy so you can see the rest of the configuration and uh, we've got to the end of it uh, that's it from me thanks for watching